This is K.M. Wyland, and you're listening to the 281st episode of the Helping Writers Become Authors podcast. It never ceases to amaze me how different every book I write turns out to be. And I don't just mean the stories, but the processes from book to book. When I wrote Storming two summers ago, it was one of those special stories that just worked out right from the start. The character's voice popped up right away. Even the first chapter, which I inevitably labor over, turned out almost exactly right, right at the first pop. Wayfair, the historical superhero story I'm now working on, is not surprisingly going its own way as well. Its first chapters haven't been quite the breeze that Stormings were, but it's a delight to discover new characters and how they want to develop on the page. It's like finally meeting someone with whom you've been corresponding for a long time. You know a lot about them, and yet they're never exactly what you expect. Yet another joy of being a writer. The latest post in the video series on my blog is the single best trick for originality in your fiction. It shares the most important question you can ask yourself about originality in your fiction and how to access it in every single scene. To find the post, visit my site at helpingwritersbecomeauthors.com. And now I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast entitled The Crucial Way to Figure Out How Much Time Your Story Should Cover. Do you know off the top of your head how much time your story should cover? If not, you're definitely not alone. This is a tough question for most authors to answer. I keep track of the date and time of each scene in my story, and I still couldn't tell you off the top of my head how much time my work in progress Wayfarer covers. I looked, it was a month and a half, but this is an important factor in any story. As such, let us now take a moment to consider just how much time your story should cover. If you, as the author of your story, can't even tell me now how much time your story covers, why does it matter to readers? Readers will rarely be any more aware than you are of the specific number of years, months, weeks, days, or hours that pass in your story. So what's the big deal? To a certain extent, there is no big deal. The passage of time in a story matters for only two reasons. One, pacing. Shorter timelines create faster stories. Longer timelines create more leisurely stories. Two, realism. Shorter timelines won't allow for a believable evolution of certain character arcs, relationships, or situations. Longer timelines won't allow for believable pressure and tension in the stakes. So insofar as the timeline in your story isn't endangering either of these factors, then it doesn't matter. But pacing and realism are two important and integral components of any story. So they're hardly to be a chewed at. So how to decide if your story would be better off with a shorter or longer timeline? Let's consider. We find short timelines in fast-moving stories, thrillers, mysteries, and action stories. One of the pros of short timelines is raised stakes. The shorter the timeline, the louder the story's ticking clock will be. In other words, the shorter the story, the more impossible the protagonist's mission, the higher the stakes, the more the readers won't be able to look away. Another pro of short timelines is streamlined plots. Short timelines also encourage a certain amount of economy of motion. We know the hero has to rescue his wife in three days, so we know we have to keep the story moving as quickly as possible, and that means no extra moving parts. In a short timeline, we're less tempted to throw in meandering, pointless sequel scenes in which not much is happening other than unnecessary chit-chat. A con of short timelines is not enough character development. The pros of the short timeline are also its pitfalls. A too short timeline in the wrong story might end up forcing the plot into a tighter box than what it really needs. Sometimes those meandering sequel scenes aren't so pointless after all. Sometimes they're the reader's favorite parts, since they're often what allows for greater character development. Every story, no matter how tight and madcap, needs enough space to slow down and breathe in between action montages. 
Another con of short timelines is a defiance of realism. It's great to put your protagonist under pressure by limiting the amount of time in which he has to work and then limiting it some more, a la the guns of Navarone or Inception. But you've also got to give him enough time to make it at least semi-realistic. This is especially true when characters need to be traveling long distances. If he's got to fly from Delhi to Rio, then you've got to give him enough time to actually sit on a long flight or two. Now, we can find long timelines in just about any genre, but they're especially popular in the more leisurely sort of tales told in literary novels, historical sagas, and sometimes in fantasy epics. One of the pros of long timelines is gravitas. A long timeline doesn't necessarily have to equal a long book, but admit it, the longer the book, the more serious it appears to readers. By itself, This is no argument in favor of a long timeline for any story. But depending on the type of story you're writing, you may need that extra sense of weight simply to drive home the magnitude of your story. A plot that takes place within a single day of your protagonist's life may indeed change his life. But how much more so a plot that takes up months or years? Some events need to be stretched out over a longer timeline in order to make readers feel the true weight of their impact on the protagonist's life. Another pro of long timelines is deeper character arcs. Most people don't change overnight, even after experiencing a tremendous catalytic event. Any character arc will be an evolution of your protagonist. As such, the more time you give him to learn, grow, and develop that arc, the more space you'll have to create a sense of change that seems realistic, purposeful, and lasting. Longer timelines also give you more time to actually illustrate that change instead of cramming important character development scenes in wherever there happens to be a short lull in the madcap action of a shorter timeline. A con of long timelines is non-essential plot elements. One of the major problems with longer timelines is that they often give authors the sense of a vast amount of space in which to play around with their characters. The result can be a host of non-essential plot elements that send the story wandering all over the place. A long timeline is no excuse for a sloppy story. If you're meandering, then you might want to consider shortening up the amount of time you're asking readers to spend with your characters. Another con of long timelines is low stakes. This is probably the most obvious one. Long timelines often don't provide the same opportunity for high stakes that we find in their shorter counterparts. When your characters have a year to achieve their goal and defeat the antagonistic force, the pressure just isn't going to feel as intense. In some stories, the solution may be to simply whack a few months off the timeline. However, it's also possible to achieve the same sense of urgency by injecting many smaller ticking clocks throughout the story instead of employing just one for the entire plot. So how do you know how much time your story should cover? One of the most important things to realize is that the length of your timeline has no direct correlation to the length of the book itself. It is possible to tell a very fast story in a great many pages, and a very slow story in a limited number. The most important consideration is simply how much time does your story need? The story should be given exactly as much time as it needs for its plot to unwind to optimum effect. Don't feel that just because you happen to be writing a thriller, you can't write a story with a long timeline. And don't feel that just because you're writing a leisurely family saga, The whole thing can't take place in one day at a funeral or a wedding, as in Ann Tyler's breathing lessons. First, consider what speed of pacing would be most appropriate for the story you want to tell. Then, consider how much time your plot events require to transpire realistically. Your optimum timeline will be found somewhere in between. Thank you for listening to the Wordplay Podcast. To read a transcript of this episode, you can visit my website at helpingwritersbecomeauthors.com. And be sure to check back again next week.